we're talking with Dr. Katherine Albright, who's not only the CEO of the Natural Standard Research Collaboration, but she's also its founder. What initially led you to start up this facility? Gosh, 10 years ago now, uh, I worked full-time as a clinician in Massachusetts General Hospital, and we were seeing more and more patients coming in on these therapies, and we felt lost. We didn't know where to go for unbiased information. A lot of the information out there was based on hearsay, or propaganda, uh, people who were sort of selling snake oils, um, and it wasn't organized in an evidence-based way that healthcare providers could trust to make safe recommendations to their patients. So a bunch of us got together in sort of a journal club fashion, which is people who critique journal articles, uh, and looked at all of the resources available in this area, and both in print and online, and said none of them met our standards. So that's how we came up with the name Natural Standard Research Collaboration. And our small journal club of nerdy clinicians who were obsessed with finding out the facts about alternative therapies dominoed rapidly into an international um, consortia of hundreds. So um, to this day, we have over 500 contributing members, and they work at various organizations, hospitals, universities that help to aggregate and analyze the scientific literature in the area of complementary medicine. So we've come a long way and it's been a lot of hard work, but we hope that we're really doing a, a public service. And for those who might not be familiar, what is complementary and alternative medicine? Good question. Uh, there's a lot of controversy around the terminology actually because some say it shouldn't be us against them, conventional versus alternative. So uh, complementary uh, is a little bit more of a PC way to say it is that uh, all therapies are part of your personalized health care plan. So integrative is a term that we like to use, is an integrative approach, meaning that the input of your conventional healthcare provider, like your physician, nurse, dietitian, pharmacist, is equally as important as that of your chiropractor, acupuncturist, herbalist, naturopath, and we all need to work together to assure the best patient care. So part of the aim of Natural Standard Research Collaboration is to foster open communications amongst providers and consumers so that we're working together as opposed to uh, against each other. So it started out as alternative medicine, then complementary and alternative medicine, and now we're heading towards a truly integrative or multidisciplinary approach. How do the consumers educate themselves on this type of therapy? So the uh, consumer-driven healthcare initiative is huge, of people educating themselves, especially with the World Wide Web now, and bringing things to their provider and asking about them. And there are actually statistics showing the millions of dollars spent on these therapies and that more patients actually see complementary providers than primary care physicians. So, you know, we're, we're hoping that by um, increasing education and information in this area that clinicians will become more educated and comfortable discussing these therapies and the patients will be more forthcoming with sharing what they're taking instead of keeping it a secret or there's something called white coat syndrome where when you go to see your healthcare provider your blood pressure increases because you're anxious about the white coat and we're hoping that some of what we're doing will help to dissipate that so that people can really talk about it openly, make safe and effective therapeutic choices. Because the facts are, people are using this whether we like it or not, so you can be as strongly against it as you like, but from a liability perspective, a malpractice perspective, you are obligated to reconcile your patient's profile and all of their medications with whatever they're taking, inside or outside of the hospital. So, you know, it's here and we have to learn about it. And um, we've played an integral role in offering continuing education programs for all disciplines so that, you know, every year you have to get an average of 15 credits to maintain your license, depending on what discipline you're in. And so when you use our online resource, you gain continuing education credit. So that helps people, you know, feel more comfortable looking things up. So, and also training practitioners of the future through academic rotations 
students come here as a research rotation and get submerged into exploring these therapies. They also do site visits, visits where they shadow practitioners. So it opens their mind and they get to see things that they never used to. And how important is it for patients to let their doctors know that they are seeking out these type of treatments? Ideally before they start taking something because you want to get baseline laboratory values, observe what special diets they might be taking, special exercise regime, medications, both over-the-counter and prescription drugs, can interact with herbs and supplements. So it's important that we get a baseline and as we might choose together to add things that we can prevent adverse effects, monitor, and do dosing adjustments accordingly. Also, it's important because more and more insurance companies are starting to cover these therapies. So you might as well work together with your provider to choose a therapy that's been well studied and that's on the formulary of your insurance company so that it gets covered. So that's an, another motivator for providers and consumers to work together and communicate openly. So there are a lot of studies in the work. How do individuals know what study is going to be right for them? And more specifically, how do you determine if a study is credible or not? We use a method of rating the clinical studies. So the first is called the Jadad score, and it's a rating scale of zero to five. And the higher the score, the better the design of the study. So a more well-designed study holds more weight that it, it might actually be effective. And some people, there's sort of a misnomer of, of if a pharmaceutical company or an urban supplement manufacturer funds a study that it's biased and they're influencing the study in a negative way, and that's not always true. And these rating scales that we utilize help eliminate that bias, is we don't care who funded it, we're saying was it randomized, was it properly controlled, was it conducted to establish the endpoint or the conclusion that the authors are saying, yes, this works, or, or no, this doesn't work. In addition to that, we do statistical analysis, and we summarize all of our findings in an easy-to-understand report card grading scale, A through F. A has the most scientific evidence for support. F, eh, you know, doesn't work. As far as we know today, the science is always evolving and that's based on the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, which we're used to using in conventional medicine, so practitioners can easily relate to it, and it's based on the number of statistically significant, well-designed, randomized, controlled clinical trials. So all the geeky, nitty-gritty language helps us clinicians feel more confident, and the easy A through F makes it so that consumers understand it right away, just like a report card. Um, one that is a really hot topic is fish oils, omega-3s, because those actually made it onto the New York Heart Association guidelines for cardiovascular health. So for high cholesterol, for high blood pressure. So that was really a dawning day to have something considered alternative hit the mainstream by a, an organization like that that uh, is very credible. So uh, certainly omega-3s get an A for those conditions. ALA uh, gets an A for diabetic patients, which is, again, a you know, very common condition that millions of people deal with. So it's remarkable that a natural product would have so much supporting evidence and perhaps help to reduce dosing and side effects and costs of prescription medications. Again, though, it is very important to use these therapies in conjunction with your healthcare provider because you don't want your blood pressure or your blood sugar levels going up and down all over the place. So that, that's important for people to realize if something does get a grade of an A that it is effective and has been shown to work, it might also mess something up. You know, nothing is 100% receptor specific that it's just going to fix your blood pressure, just fix your diabetes without possibly altering other things in your body. And a good example of that is ephedra, it, which has been banned from the market now for quite some time. But some people might think ephedra gets an F because we've found that it has these cardiovascular adverse effects. But actually for effectiveness, it gets an A. But that doesn't mean that it's safe. So different vitamins, you know, A through K, 
uh, folate, thiamine, selenium, a lot of antioxidants have been studied and get A's for different conditions, as have what we call complementary modalities. So acupressure, for example, and acupuncture for back pain has outstanding evidence and is also covered by many third-party payers or insurers. So those are some of the more popular ones. The, the list has grown exponentially as more research funding has gone into this area and that we've aggregated the international literature in one place. It's affecting the grades all the time. And when we first started, a lot of therapies got a C because we just didn't know yet. And over time, we've seen those grades pan out from A to an F. And a great example is for skin conditions or dermatologic conditions. I'm sure most people are familiar with the aloe plant, that you know you bent off a leaf and you put it on a cut or a scrape or something. And when we first started and we looked at all the literature, it got a C for skin care. So that you know didn't really, doesn't help, doesn't hurt if you like it and you grow it you know in your, a pot in your kitchen or whatever, good for you, right? But over time of, of studying this for the past decade or so, we've been able to elucidate very fine lines of comparative effectiveness. So to see that aloe, for some skin conditions, has an A, some has a B, some has a D, that can actually make certain conditions worse. So that also shows you not to self-treat, because you might think you're helping something and you might actually delay healing of it. Now, these type of studies can take a long time. Can you just kind of bring us through the process, how they're started, and how they ultimately get here and receive a grade? That's a good question, and people have a misconception about that, too, is the N, the number of patients in the study. Some people think if it's a small number, then that means it's a, a low-quality study, and that's not necessarily the case. We have to start somewhere, so we usually start in vitro or in the test tube or laboratory, then we move on to animal studies, then we do pilot studies in humans, and you know, you take safe steps an inch forward, and then you can do multi-center, randomized control studies for longer lengths of time to, to make sure, because you know, it's one thing to say, oh, using this for three weeks, we don't really see any adverse effects. But once you start involving different types of patient populations with different medical conditions or on different drug therapies or other herbs and supplements, and then you extend the length that they use it or the dose that, you know, increase the dose and the length, for example, you can start seeing different things. And sometimes it's a, a more positive beneficial effect, but sometimes it also is more risk as far as safety concerns go. How thorough is the natural standard when it comes to consumer care? Well, what we've done is we're only two people, so we, you know, we only have so much time in the day to discuss these things, so we're hoping by training practitioners and, uh, you know, existing practitioners and practitioners of the future that that will help so there's more people to consult effectively in this area. And by compiling all of our international research into one centralized location, like an information clearinghouse of our website, hospitals and universities and manufacturers use our website and there are multiple reading levels. So there's a professional level that's very detailed, has toxicology and pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, for the researchers and the professionals. And then there's a skimmed down version written in what we call a bottom line level that is meant for consumers. And providers can print those out in a retail pharmacy or a, a retail natural product store or in a hospital, for example, and hand them to their consumers in English or Spanish, for example. And then we also have our books that, and some are geared towards professionals and some are geared towards consumers and you can get them on Amazon or, or any website. As a doctor, what type of feedback have you been hearing from the consumers? Well at first it was a little bit of what you said is, oh my goodness, you know these, I can't believe these Harvard doctors and you know pharmacists and all these people are doing something so controversial, you know, is this snake oil or voodoo or what is this? But now that it's come into the mainstream so much and the studies published are so hard to keep up with and keep reinforcing, you've got to know about this, you've got to know about this, we found a lot of people opening their minds. There's a number of 
wellness centers and um, NCAM, I should mention, National Centers for Complementary and Alternative Medicine have NCAM centers throughout the country. And then hospitals in addition are opening mind-body centers and wellness centers. So we feel like it, it's getting there. People are opening their minds and, and becoming more accepting in general. And those who aren't accepting are being forced to accept the fact that they have to deal with it. They can't ignore it anymore and, and, and shut the door on their patients about it. It's not unidimensional. You have to consider it from, you know, health from all angles and personalize it to your patient's preferences. So the scientific data is one thing, but their opinion and their needs, needs and wants and feelings, and you know, we've all learned how big an impact stress can uh, you know, impact healthcare. So you're right, it's, it's very important. And the way I look at it as a provider is, instead of being com combative or feeling competitive against this movement, I embrace it. I need all the help I can get. If the dietitian and the herbalist and the chiropractor and everybody's helping me make sure I'm doing a good job, you know, bring it on. The, the, the more help, the better. Uh, the more people preventing and, and looking out for errors and assuring safety. So it's, it's definitely about fostering teamwork. And on a personal level, why is this important to you? Would you consider yourself an advocate? I'm not actually an advocate of CAM saying, you know, take it or a proponent of it. I don't take anything myself. I'm more of a proponent of working together, teamwork, education, and feeling like I'm doing something that's important for the community. So, you know, bringing people together, you know, from all spectrums on the consumer side and the healthcare provider side. Now, we do have peer reviewers who are against and for, but by facilitating blinded peer review of all of our monographs, we eliminate that bias. It's, it's all facilitated in a blinded fashion. So for demonstration purposes, say an herbalist is like, yay, you know, give this an A. And a toxicologist is like, F, F, you know. They, they might not um, agree, but we stick to the validated reproducible grading scale. And if it gets a B, it's indisputable that by these criteria, you know, that's where the science stands. Now in their personal practice, a pharmacist might be more conservative and say that they only recommend things with A's. And an herbalist might be a little bit more liberal and say, well, I've been using this in my patients for 25 years, and so a C plus my clinical experience is good enough for me. Or another good example is traditional Chinese medicine. You mentioned acupuncture earlier, but some of the mixtures of the Chinese herbals have been used for centuries, and people live for a long time, so maybe there's something to it and we should give it a chance. So that's another reason why I do what I do is just out of, out of scientific interest and sort of putting my inspector hat on and wanting to know, wanting to find the answer. Mm -hmm.